Rabbi Wine Black. Can I show him some love? Thank you. Wow, what a blessing. What a blessing it is to be here today with all of you and to look out at this crown. I want to tell you, we don't get this on every week in my place. <laughs> But I want to tell you a story. I want to tell you that I still recall the time many years ago when I told my children, and now all of them are grown with children of their own, about one of the Jewish holidays. It could have been the holiday of Passover. It could have been the holiday we call Hanukkah or Purim or some other holiday. And I explained to them, I was telling them what the holiday was about and that there were those who wanted to try and kill the Jewish people, but that fortunately they didn't succeed. Fortunately, they didn't succeed. And then one of them asked me a simple question. My child sitting in my lap looked up at me and asked with those big innocent eyes, you know, the kind that children have. And she said to me just one word, and that one word was, why? Why did they want to kill us? And I was at a loss for words. I'm a man of words, but I was at a loss for words and didn't know what to say. And my voice choked and I had tears in my eyes because I had no answer to her question. And I thought about the history, the history of our people. I thought about what we've done and tried to make the world a better place. Of all the Jews throughout history who have made so many important contributions in so many fields and done so much to improve society wherever they lived and what it is that we got in return. We never asked for anything other than to be able to live in peace, to be able to practice our religion, preserve and pass on our traditions and now that's what I wanted to do I was thinking about those traditions I was passing on to my children and what they were inheriting the glory of our accomplishments but also of the history of those who had tried to hurt tried to destroy tried to annihilate our people how much cruelty we had endured how much suffering we had known and you can relate to this how senseless hatred is of any kind because my friends, just as there is no justification, no reason can ever be given to justify racism or bigotry or prejudice, there's no way to explain why anti-Semitism exists. And while I wasn't able to explain to them why this was our fate and our destiny, I want you to know it's precisely because of that experience, because of what happened that I stand here today. It's because of that experience that I know what it's like to be an outsider. It's because of that experience and that history of persecution that I identify with the persecuted, I identify with those who are singled out and those who are discriminated against and those who are called different. And that's why Jews have been in the vanguard of the effort to ensure that all people deserve to be treated equally because we know We know and that's why we march together. And that's why we know marching together for civil rights because our Bible and our sages tell us in the book of Genesis that every person is created, but Selim Elohim, every person is created in the image of God. And that's why our sages tell us that whoever saves a single life, single life saves an entire world or to put it in terms we can understand today, it teaches us that lives matter, that all lives matter. And yes, that black lives, especially black lives matter, that's what we learn. Now I want you to know I'm here today on a Jewish holiday, the holiday of Tisha B'Av, and we sat on the floor in our synagogue last night in our chapel, and we mourn the tragedies that have befallen us because 2,000 years ago, the temple was destroyed in Jerusalem. And for those year, 2,000 years, we lived in exile, longing to be able to return to the land of Israel. We mourned and we were sorry, and we mourned that loss, but we celebrate the resurrection. And we know that every day that tiny state of Israel, a country of only 8 million people, the size of the state of New Jersey, still has to fight for its existence. 
Now, like many of you, I watched the Olympics. How many of you saw the Olympics? And like many of you, I shared the pride of the victories of our athletes. And one of the most inspiring things at the Olympics is to see the intense rigor of competition, but also the respect that they have for each other's opponents. Well, I want you to know, when the Israeli judo player Ori Sassoon defeated Islam El Shababi from Egypt, in violation of the rules of conduct and all rules of the sport, the Egyptian refused to shake the extended hand of the Israeli. And that's a country with which Israel has a peace treaty. And then there was Jaoud Fa'ami of Saudi Arabia, who preferred to forfeit her judo match and give up her dream of competing in the Olympics because on the next round she might have to face an Israeli athlete. That's typical of the kind of treatment that Israelis get each and every day. But I want you to know, worst of all, worst of all was the Lebanese team. Did you hear about this? The Lebanese team who refused to ride together with the Israeli team on the bus to the opening ceremony. The Lebanese team actually blocked the Israeli team from getting on the bus and said they wouldn't ride with them if they were on the bus. So I want, to know, want you to know, and I'm here to tell you, that we Jews know what it's like and what it means to be denied a seat on the bus. So just as we've ridden together on freedom rides throughout the South, just as we fought together against forces of discrimination, I want us to ride together again. I want us, and that's why I'm here with Pastor Jenkins, I want us to stand up together against bigotry, against intolerance, against prejudice, against racism, in all forms. And we stand together against anti-Semitism, against those who single out and discriminate against you and against me, against the people of Israel and against people of color and against anyone. And we will stand together, my friends, and that's why I'm here today and forever because of one reason, we are all God's children created in the image of God. Thank you. We'll thank Rabbi for that sermon. Come on, give the Lord a shout right there. It's a great message.